I think maybe we can start by giving the audience some context about Quantum Metric. Can you tell us a little bit about how it got started and you know, your push to the cloud? Yeah, absolutely. So we started in 2015. And really, the idea, I, I started my career in retail in the early 90s, I think. Uh, it's been a bit of a while. And there's this magic that happens when you walk into a store and you are seeking to purchase some specific good uh, clothing or jewelry. I, I started my career out in the, the, re the retail clothing industry. Uh, you could be buying uh, an airline ticket, engaging with a bank, and there's this special touch that we've perfected over millennia that when I have that physical engagement with a person, I can understand when they have a need, when they are looking for help from an associate or et cetera. And as we have progressed on to digital, how do we deliver these incredible, unique experiences, these touches that we have in our physical engagement, how do we do that well online? And so that was the, the challenge that we set out to do. And you know, there's a, a picture here of uh, what it looked like in, in 2015, and, and maybe some of you that are in startups can relate to this. To this, this is you know two guys in a room with a Kanban board, uh, just uh, chugging away at code and design. So it was, it was a really fun, uh, fun start back in 2015. Uh, we've gone a long way since then, and so we've had some incredible success. So just to kind of catch up, and just in the last year, we've had 400% growth year over year. We've uh, had been fortunate enough to take 26 million dollars of, of funding. And we have 80 plus experts around the world to help our customers engage in delivering their, their, their best on digital. And that was your Series A funding? That seems a, like a big number. Can you it tell was. us about that a bit? Yeah, you know, we, we've had so much success at enterprises engaging with some of the, the best brands, uh, United Airlines, Alaska, eBay, Western Union, StubHub, Ticketmaster, Bed Bath. Uh, we've had such a, a, an incredible engagement of how we empower those large enterprises at delivering their best on, uh, on, on digital. And when you get that kind of uh, you know, uh, success with the largest of brands, and even being a small company, there's some excitement. And so with that, we were fortunate enough to, to have one of the, the best venture firms out there, uh, you know, a private equity, is uh, Insight Venture Partner. So really blessed to have so much success at, a, at an early stage. Great. And is that, is that your team in a Q formation? How long did it take you to do that? <laughs> yeah, so we, we like to have a lot of fun at, at Quantum. And so this one is just one of our, our team get-togethers. And we all uh, we threw up a drone, and it was uh, it's quite fun. So, so uh, I think one of the great things of, uh, about startups and you know really anyone's workplace, it's got to have a lot of fun. So yeah. we do that here at Quantum. So I see you had two people in that 2015 photo, and now you've grown. And talk about your push to the cloud and where you started compared to now. Yeah. So, you know, I think we all have our strengths and weaknesses. I know my weakness is not. You know, it's it's not about. I, I don't design infrastructure. I don't design data centers. And so I'm embarrassed to show this picture, but literally this is just last week our quote data center on-prem uh, in our Colorado Springs office. <laughs> um, and, and the funny story about it recently is that there was a, a bombogenesis, there was a big storm in, in Colorado, uh, Colorado Springs, and uh, we literally had to get someone to drive a few miles in a crazy storm to hit a power switch uh, somewhere in this closet for our development tool. So as we all worked from home, you know, we, we got the support that we needed. So th this is how I know that we weren't meant to have an on-prem solution. But it, it, there are some other reasons, too. Um, we have, um, we, we, but, but before I jump into some of the other reasons, I, I guess our, our journey really began with, with the same journey that most of the folks that have onboarded themselves on, on the Google Cloud have, have engaged with. And it was really about, we knew as a data analytics company we were going to have massive amounts of scale coming in. And how would we be able to elastically scale we didn't have, at the time, tens of millions of dollars of funding to go build a, a, a crazy data center to handle that, the, that level of scale. And at the, at, the, uh, the, at the end of the day, how do we get folks that are in financial services industries that are massive retailers, how do we get them comfortable with deploying onto our platform when, when we talk about security and, and privacy and GDPR and really great uh, challenges that we face in technology, how do we get them comfortable with that? And knowing that, that Google literally has laser beam protected floors, like we don't have them in our office, I don't know if you have them in yours, but, um, but, but also uh, you know, even down to custom built embedded hardware to make sure that 
the hardware hasn't been tampered with, that it's not been hacked, et cetera, which if you've been seeing the news, it happens. And so how do we get our enterprise customers comfortable with that level of security? So that was kind of the beginning of our journey, and I'm excited to share a little bit more today about where we kind of fell into. There's much more to cloud than just, I would almost say, these menial things of, hey, look, we can have reduced costs, we can scale quickly. These are, these are maybe table stakes, but there are some really cool things to help us think different about the challenges that we face and that we solve for our enterprise customers. Right, and, and just for the audience, is anyone familiar with seeing that closet photo in your own offices? I'm sure it's pretty common. And we're also familiar with that need to scale very quickly in a short amount of time. Can you elaborate more on this amount of scale of traffic and data that you've seen at Quantum? Yeah, I'm, I'm super excited. I love scale. I'm passionate about taking on a large amounts of data and how, to, how do we ingest it and actually get insights from it. So a, a typical month at Quantum we will take in over 600 million sessions. So to give you, to put that in perspective, it's about 300 million unique visitors, and that's about one-ninth of the internet. That's one-ninth of the folks that are online. We also take 89 billion HTTPS requests, and that's, to put in perspective of scale, about one-fifth the number of queries that Google search handles in a given month. So massive amounts of scale. We handle one and a half petabytes of network traffic, a half a petabyte of cloud storage, and over 14 petabytes of BigQuery analysis. So this is just uh, an overwhelming amount of data. It kind of feels like uh, just an onslaught of information. And um, you know what was fun about cloud is how do we build an infrastructure to do that? We don't need to. We can hit a couple buttons in Google Console and scale. And, and we have some incredible retailers I mentioned earlier. Imagine a Black Friday. I know Ratnakar yesterday was talking about Kohl's and his experience in cloud and being able to scale so quickly. I mean, imagine a day that you need to handle three to five times your normal workload and you just hit a switch. It was pretty exciting right. on, on how we can engage in cloud and have so much success with so much ease. Right, yeah, and this can't be an easy challenge. You know, How are you able to support this amount of data traffic over a petabyte? Yeah, so, so it's, you know, they have this massive scale. How many of you have been involved with big data projects? And, and how many of you have had incredible insights coming out of those big data projects? So for, so for the, the viewer audience, not that many, right? It, it, everyone kind of put their hand down. And so we collect incredible amounts of data, but no one cares about what you collect. I don't care about hoarding information or hoarding things. I care about what insights can I deliver right. from that data. And so that's where that massive scale analysis really comes into play. And so when we, when we talk about, um, you know, us as a company and, and how to get great data, how to get great insights from it. I like to relate it to flying an airline. I know all of us, and many of us have flown here, but many of us fly often. And when I'm flying to Iceland today, and I'll tell you, I didn't buy the jet to take that flight to Iceland. I'm buying a seat, right? Uh, and so with our sporadic workload, so we have folks coming into our console and trying to, in our platform, and trying to look at uh, insights, some questions they want to answer, are they doing well? Um, is their hybrid cloud uh, it, it performing well? Or is their on-prem and, and their cloud solutions performing the same or even better in cloud? They have questions they want to answer, but it's sporadic. It's not constantly in our platform asking questions. So it's sporadic. It's very similar to I need to take a, a, a flight somewhere. I need a very small amount of compute power or a large amount of compute power for a small amount of time. I don't need to take, I don't need to buy the jet. I want a seat on the airline. So we had that same challenge with our workload. And what's really exciting is uh, how the cloud can empower this. And we realized quickly that our success was really about how do we ingest this data and find novel ways to present insights from that large amount of data set. And that was what was going to differentiate us. It wasn't about how we collected. It wasn't about how it looked in our console. It was what insights can we deliver for our customers. Right. Yeah, and, and this data scale is handled by BigQuery, as you mentioned. And a lot of our customers at Google Cloud are doing very innovative things with BigQuery at the moment. But as many people know, it's not the only data science platform. You know, there are other vendors that offer other solutions. You mentioned a really funny story about your son earlier. Do you mind telling the <laughs> audience about that story? Yeah, so I, uh, I, was, I was writing an article for Forbes about our experience in cloud and, and different takeaways that we've had at massive scale, and I was writing about BigQuery and about how it's been transformational for our business, how we've been empowered, empowering our customers to have new insights that they never even knew that they could ask, some automation about the processes that they discover where frustration is happening online. 
And it's, just, it's, it's hilarious, because my nine-year-old son, his name is Cody, he seriously says to me, but dad, can Amazon and Microsoft do this too? And it's kind of like blown away, but he, he knew the names of the other two large cloud providers. And uh, you know, it's funny that you asked this, Cody. Um, absolutely. Like I really believe that Amazon and Azure, right, AWS and Azure can, can deliver on massive scale compute and massive scale data analysis. But the challenge that we have is our workload is sporadic. And I don't want to spin up, let's say, 50,000 CPUs to do an analysis. It might take a minute or two to spin up, run my query for five seconds, and shut it all down. It's just, it's not financially feasible. And um, so, you know, I think one of the really unique differentiations of Google Cloud has been this fractional lease of, of analysis, of, of big compute to chug away at massive scale uh, of data. And I want to talk a little bit about some of the other things that we, we believe that massive compute brings to the table when it comes to thinking different about, about data analysis. But for us, and what I told my son was, absolutely, but fractional leasing has been a differentiator. And I think if you have either used BigQuery or if you know folks that are, they'll talk to you about that, that same fractional lease, that massive amount of, of query capabilities for a small period of time is really one of the unique features of, of BigQuery. And the title of the session is Apple's 1997 Promise to Think Different. Can you talk more about what you mean by that? How are you thinking different with your teams right now? Yeah, so this is one of the best marketing campaigns of all time. And uh, you know, I, I know from looking at the audiences, there's some of us that, have, that probably remember this campaign uh, very well. And it, it, it was talking about you know, Apple's engineering fortitude and likening it to geniuses that were brave enough to take on the world and change it. Maybe crazy enough, I think the words were crazy enough to, to try to change the world and then actually accomplished it. But it wasn't about buying an Apple computer and all of a sudden you thought different. It was simply like we think different like these geniuses. What I thought was amazing and, and where I came up with this concept was like when we engaged with BigQuery, we, we basically took our handcuffs off. These handcuffs that we had no idea existed in terms of massive scale query analysis. We could start asking questions that we never thought about asking because now we didn't have any rails. We didn't have indexes. We didn't have certain types of queries that we could run. We could run a question across a day, a month, a year, and start getting insights that we never really knew about. So my belief is that we are now able to think different about how do we solve business problems for our customers, for our enterprises, in ways that we never really explored. Right. I think you also talked about machine intelligence a bit too, right? Yeah, so, so you know, one of the things that we discovered, you know, and it's, you know, we're a startup, we went from you know, just a few years ago from two people to you know, 80 plus today. You know, as that journey happens, you start to learn, for me, a, a little bit about that selling process. And you know, we, we used to talk, and I think it's kind of funny, because Apple never really talked about the performance of the CPUs and all the metrics of memory, stuff that you know, kind of techies that we think about and we think about, we should share this. What, what I learned was no one really wants this concept about machine intelligence. We can talk about AI, machine learning. No one really cares about that. They just want intelligence. They just want answers to their, their challenges and their, and their business needs. And so that was you know, a journey that we went on and, and started figuring out that we can help customers automate some of those human processes, some of the things that they do and they spend hours or days. We can take massive scale compute and solve them perhaps in seconds. Yeah. Yeah, and machine intelligence here, how, can you talk about some of the examples that you've gone through at your company? How are you able to implement this type of practice and thinking? Yeah, so we've been able to take, some of the things that we've really saw for our customers have been, when I go to a website and I'm having a bad experience, how do I know about it? I don't fill out surveys, I don't call the company and tell them, hey, your website's broken, I just leave. So how do we figure out people are having a bad experience. And it turns out we can look at their behavior. They're, they're clicking reload, they're hitting the back and forward button, they're rage clicking the, the book a flight or, or transact button. And we can look at those behaviors and with BigQuery we can start aggregating around those behaviors and discover these lead to under conversion. And so we've automated that process of discovery and build that sort of human discovery, this human analysis into our product. So it's been really transformational for our, for our enterprise customers because they don't have to spend days wondering, is this actually impacting my business? They can know about it in seconds. Uh, an another fantastic one was the ability to understand when did a problem actually start occurring? And for our enterprise customers, they had no way to know when the bug was introduced into their system. They, they would spend 
days looking at logs and, and looking at release notes and trying to figure it out. What we're able to do is spin up tens of thousands of CPUs in Cloud Functions and Google Compute to analyze when did this start happening by replaying every session that visited the website when did the indicator of the issue start occurring? So with massive scale compute, we started solving problems that our enterprise customers had never even broached because they just didn't have 50,000, 100,000 CPUs lying around in the data center. So it's really been amazing how cloud has enabled us to think different about some of the challenges that these enterprises were facing. And I think another one that's been really you know, a, a hot topic for us in our space has been how do we take the highest standard of care with our customer data and a lot of it was left to human configuration. We know where sensitive information was, we know where there's PCI information, or PII, and either encrypt or mask it. The problem with that is always left it up to human error. And how often was someone looking at this type of data and discovery, you know, and that discovery would happen? We needed to automate that. So we're now engaging with uh, you know, Google's sensitive data API and rolling this out hopefully in the next uh, you know, short time period about instead of waiting for, for humans to discover that there's misconfiguration, can't we just have the computer tell us that here's an opportunity to improve the data that we're collecting? So that, that's just really great ways and exciting ways that we can engage in machine learning, massive scale compute, massive scale query analysis to automate some of the functions that we had to do as humans. Yeah, and I think a lot of our audience probably wants to know how they can implement these practices into their own organizations as well. Can you talk about some exemplary use cases for them to do this? Yeah, I think, I think there's a, there's not a prescriptive way that you can take this and bring it home to your, all of your own organizations. You have to take a look at you know, what are some of the human processes that we can automate. Uh, and, and as you engage in cloud scale and think about compute in different ways, I do believe it will help you think differently about some of the massive problems that, that you engage at, at, at your enterprises and startups alike. And so, Here's the, my thought process. It's a very simple process, and it's just literally the process that we took to discover, hey, how can we automate some of these processes with massive scale compute? And it's really about where are there tasks that we face that consume a lot of time? How can we translate that into a set of queries? You know, how can we take a look at this massive scale data and understand, here's how we automate that process. Identifying key insights, what will make people engage in, um, in these results, like for us, it was about revenue. If we can talk about, if you do this, you'll make $17 million, that's when people started saying, okay, these are insights that I want to listen to versus, hey, here's some graphs and charts. Thank you for the anecdotal evidence. I'm going to go on about my priorities and my daily job. So when we can connect that with revenue, that's when really people start to engage in that, those, those results. And then um, just you know, engaging across teams. So we learned a little bit about cross team and, and maybe the, the intersection of domains where I, we believe that this is where creativity is really born. And so we can get product teams and engineering and DevOps and business teams and, and executive teams all aligned on where the biggest impacts are for their business. We can start to make a, what we believe to say the words digital transformation, because those words mean a little bit different for each company, but a digital transformation on, on having everyone aligned on where are my biggest successes for my organization, and how do we get everyone to take action, as opposed to you know, maybe confirmation bias or everyone having their own agendas. So that's been pretty exciting. So following that, that recipe to success, uh, we've had about three or four iterations on how do we think different about our data, and I think it's something that the audience could take away. Thank you, yeah, thank, thank you so much for sharing the, some of those wins that you've gotten with Google Cloud, and kind of enabling our audience to be able to achieve their own digital transformation. Awesome, well Stephanie, it's a pleasure being here, and, uh, and thank you all for, for attending. All right, thank you everyone. Okay.